It's called a subluxation, but that means like a misalignment. Okay. And so if it gets misaligned, it puts pressure on the nerve. The nerve would be a hose. And if you ever stepped on a hose, what happens? Like the water pressure changes. And you're getting either uh, too much of a sensor or not enough to whatever the nerve is going to. So when you get the adjustment, you take the foot off the hose. You take the pressure off the nerve from the bone that's compressing. From a nutritional standpoint, the main ones that are inflammatory are like the dangerous five, which are breads, sugar, dairy, alcohol, caffeine. Those are the ones that cause inflammation. Well, 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 we are back with another episode of the Nasty Truth Podcast with my friend, Dr. Benjamin Horning. Dr. Horning is a chiropractor out in Orange County, and he focuses on holistic healing. Now, for all of you out there that have no idea what it means to be a chiropractor and what a chiropractor actually does, this is the episode for you. It talks about how your spine has an effect on all of the function of your body, from your nervous system to your organs, based on the alignment and how basically whether your spine is aligned, it will affect the nerve endings in your spine and will cause signals to be deterred going to those organs. Today we're going to do a deep dive into what it means to be a holistic healer and also what it means to be a great chiropractor in an atmosphere where people think chiropractors are fuddy-duddies and they don't think they're legitimate doctors. So we're going to explain what the benefits of chiropractic health is and if you are interested in this topic at all, please chime on in. You're going to really enjoy it and we're going to do a deep dive to explain a lot of the idiosyncrasies of what this profession means. So please pay attention. We're going to do a great job for you today. So hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Nasty Truth Podcast. Today, we have one of my close friends here and one of my favorite colleagues in the world, Dr. Ben Horning. Dr. Horning is a chiropractor from Laguna Hills. Uh, Dr. Horning, thank you so much for being here. Hey, Joe, thanks for having me. Yeah, so let me go ahead and introduce Dr. Horning. Dr. Horning is a specialist in chiropractic health. He also is a specialist in holistic healing. He likes to take a different approach than most doctors, where most doctors are trying to shove medicine and pills down your throat to make you feel better, but it doesn't actually solve the problem. He likes to look at what's making you feel sick, what is causing your pain, and try to find the root of that problem. And that's really what all doctors should be doing, in my opinion, at least. And I think that's the best way to approach when somebody comes to you and is sick. Dr. Ben has been featured on many different magazines, health magazines, where he's written articles. He's been ranked as number one chiropractor in Laguna Hills, I think like four years in a row now. Yeah. Yeah, so he's crushing it there. Um, He just came out with a children's book, which is the number one ranked book on Amazon for children's health, or children's spine health. He's gonna give you all the details on that. And on top of that, my man just got pretty famous on TikTok. He has like 100,000 followers. So if you wanna watch him crack and rack a bunch of people and writing some funny raps and doing all kinds of hilarious stuff, please go ahead and follow him. I think it's at Dr. Ben Horning. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and just let Dr. Ben chime in. Is there anything that I missed or do you wanna kind of get into things? Oh, you got pretty much everything. It was six years in a row, not four years, but... See, there we go. Uh, Yeah, who's bragging, dude? There's a good thing to brag about, dude. When you're ranked number one for anything, everybody needs to know, dude. I'm a huge advocate of that. So great job. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, of course. So like I said, Dr. Ben is a chiropractor. So... I know chiropractors get a lot of bad sticks, right? A lot of people call them fake doctors. Mm. They think that they're gonna go into the chiropractor, they're gonna get their neck snapped in half and they're gonna die and they're never gonna walk out of there again. I know my parents definitely had that stigma for a very, very long time. Sure. You know, why do you think that chiropractors get such a bad rap? There's a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, I mean, it was founded in the late 1800s uh, and it was completely illegal but it was helping people get better and better. And I believe it was in the early 1900s. I think it was like in the early 1900s, it finally became a legal practice. But um, we got people better. We didn't get you on drugs forever. We didn't, uh, like it wasn't like a thing that there was no hope. Like chiropractic would get you out of pain. It would handle all sorts of different problems. Uh, I think it was in the late 80s, early 90s, um, the American Medical Association got into uh, hot water with the Chiropractic Association with us and went all the way to the Supreme Court for conspiracy to destroy the chiropractic profession. And so through schooling up until I think it was the 90s, uh, they would call chiropractors quacks and things like that as a way to suppress us. But after the, uh, after the judge ruled that, uh, that got away from a lot of the medical school's dogma. And so a lot of newer medical doctors don't have that point of view. But if you talk to some of the older ones, you'll run into that. 
Got it. So it was almost as if the medical profession was trying to shut you guys down because they didn't want you coming in and helping people heal in a more naturalistic way. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Got yeah. it. And so um, what does it mean exactly to be a doctor of chiropractic? Does that mean you're only allowed to work on spine health? Can you prescribe medicine? Can you please break that down for people so they can kind of understand? Yeah. No, chiropractic uh, helps the whole body. Uh, you adjust the spine to help the nerves that go to every muscle, cell, organ, gland in the body, um, and you help the body heal itself. Now, we don't do uh, medicine in most states. I think there's a few states that we can prescribe medicine, but as opposed to that, we do alternatives like herbs and supplements or nutrition or just the, the adjustments themselves. Uh, and that usually helps heal the body on its own. And I know a lot of chiropractors don't even want to prescribe medicine um, yeah. because then that gets into things like opioids and addiction and, and problems like that. Um, some people want to prescribe medicine to help people get off of it. But at least here in California, I'm not allowed to prescribe anything. Um, but I can give you nutritional advice herbs and supplements, and there's a lot less side effects for some of those things. Got it. Understood. So when you see behind someone's name DC, that usually means doctor of chiropractic Correct. versus somebody that has MD, which is medical doctor. Yeah, right? there's all sorts of different doctorates. So DC stands for doctor of chiropractic. And for the longest time, insurances would only pay for low back pain. So yeah. that's why a lot of doctors only do, of chiropractors, uh, only do low back pain because that's the only way they would get paid. Um, and so that's why that's there. But we treat everything. I mean, if you want, if you have like headaches or migraines, we could work on those. If it's low back pain, we can do that. Shoulders, elbows, more musculoskeletal, but we have things to help internally as well. And there's just herbs and supplements that can do that. Got it. Okay. So when you say that they only paid to help with low back pain, why just low back pain? I think a lot of people also don't understand, like, right, yeah. there's, there's three parts of your back. Maybe we should start there. You know, your spine is broken up into your cervical spine, your thoracic and your lumbar, right? That's the upper, middle and lower. Generally it's, yeah, the cervical, uh, which is the neck, thoracic, which is the mid back, lumbar, which is the low back, sacrum, which people usually call their tailbone and the coccyx, which is the tailbone. So it's actually five main segments. Um, Sacrum's fused and the coccyx is fused, but when you're a kid, those are mobile bones. Got it. Okay. And then why do you think that they only wanted to treat or allow for treatment for the low back pain instead of the other parts of your back? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of interesting. Um, mainly low back. It would also be like general skeletal issues. You could get very conspiratorial on it. Um, it's mainly like a money thing, I think personally. And I think that there's, um, certain influences that want to only keep us in that one, one spot. Got it. Cause it's like an insurance issue most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, okay. totally. Understood. But I mean, a lot of people do cash and sometimes I, I recommend that to patients because even though you have good insurance, sometimes you're limited in what you can do. And so if it's just a, a cash deal, then we're open to do a lot more things for you. Got it. When you say you're limited in what you can do, it's because the insurance companies will only approve certain types of treatment because they find it medically necessary. Correct. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. It's wild, man. It's a wild road. It gets yeah. political and it shouldn't be. It should be about somebody's health. I mean, yeah. we didn't get into, my colleagues and I didn't get into this profession to just make money and just try to beat the system. The idea is to really just help the individual so they feel better. You know, that's kind of why I do what I do. Yeah, no, I understand wholeheartedly. And if anybody doesn't know about insurance companies, I mean, the ba way it basically works and you hear people complain so much is you'll make a complaint, you'll tell the doctor, but the insurance companies a lot of time won't approve the treatment right. or they won't approve what they're asking because they don't find it medically necessary to treat that patient in that way. So a lot of times the doctor's hands are tied, especially chiropractors, and not a lot they can do unless the client's willing to come in there, pay on cash or treat on lien when they know that they're at least going to get paid reasonable amount for their services. Yeah, it's wild. I mean, you feel bad because somebody might have the best insurance, but that's a very vague term. And I mean, I've gotten checks for 13 cents. I've gotten checks for 25 cents. Like it's more expensive to mail me the check than what I actually got. Yeah. And then Wait, how, what was the cheapest check you got? 13 cents. 13 cents. It literally was more expensive to mail you the check yeah, than man. the one you got. That's ridiculous. <laughs> insurance companies have a special place in hell in my opinion, but I mean, <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way. But like some of the, some of my patients are like financially hardshiped. You know what I mean? Like ethically, what do I do? Like, yeah. you know, obviously I'd have to collect, but nobody expected to get paid 13 cents on yeah. like a, a treatment. You know what I mean? It's extremely tough. Yeah. So let's <laughs> talk about, wild. let's talk about, you know, you see these videos online, you see people cracking people's backs. Yeah. You see, you know, I've, I've obviously been adjusted by you mm -hmm. hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what it is, but 
What is being popped when you adjust someone's neck or their back? What is that called? Well, the adjustment uh, is what it's called. But what it is is you have a gas bubble in your disc. I believe it's nitric gas, um, and that adjustment opens up the gas bubble. Let's explain to people out. before we get into the gas bubble. So you said a disc. So on our spine, we have vertebrae, which are the bones, correct? Yeah, and yeah. then in between each bone on the vertebrae and the next vertebrae, there's a disc. Yeah, and the disc is like a shock absorber. Okay. You know, so like, um, like if you're riding a horse or you're riding a jet ski or something, you're going up and down, instead of your bones hitting each other and breaking or causing things, you have a shock absorber between each of your vertebra. So um, yeah, so that's what that is. And so when you do the adjustment, there's a lot of pressure from this gas bubble in the disc and it just releases. It comes back every 30 minutes. So it's not, the adjustment isn't the crack sound. That's actually just a side effect. I could get a great adjustment on you without getting a, a crack sound, or I could just move your neck half the pop sound without the adjustment. So you're saying that those bubbles that you pop, they come back within 30 seconds. 30 minutes. 30 minutes, sorry, I apologize. So 30 minutes. And then once it comes back, does that mean that you're misaligned again? No, no, it's just the sound. It, the, the crack sound is just uh, a side effect. It's not the adjustment. Um, a lot of times, you get the adjustment and the sound comes, but it's the sound doesn't equal adjustment, which I think is a big misunderstanding because most people think that. They also think I'm cracking people's necks and like it's like something's breaking or anything. I'll tell you if anything broke, yeah. like I don't, how would I even be in business? You know, like how would I even be in practice if I'm breaking people's necks like constantly? Yeah. It would be crazy. I mean, I think it's just all the movies we watched growing up as kids. I don't think it's even that easy to snap somebody's neck. You'd have to be like freaking Hulk Hogan or something to rip somebody's head off like that. Yeah, you just have to do it the right way. You know, like if the neck is back like that, that's probably the most dangerous uh, yeah. or excessive rotation. But if the neck's in a neutral position or down, or you do more of a lateral flexion, which means to the side, uh, you're, you're better off. What's a neutral position? Like this, right here. Okay, got it. And most chiro chiropractic tables, they have that headpiece that goes up and down. So if you lay on your back, you're gonna be more in the flex position, which is safer for you, as okay. opposed to leaning back like that. And nice. most injuries do occur for people trying those adjustments mm -hmm. without any practice or they're not even doctors, they're not even chiropractors. No. You know, like I've heard stories of people getting bad neck adjustments from like um, like a jujitsu instructor that wanted to try it out. Yeah. Or a um, barber, you know? What, what can happen? Just so you get like a strain in your neck basically from somebody adjusting it the wrong way and they basically stretch the muscle? Yeah, I mean, it could be all sorts of things. Like you could damage anything in the neck, you know? Yeah. Um, People have gotten strokes and things like that, but that's very, very rare. It's way safer as long as the head's in a neutral position and flexed than it is back here. But even if it's back here, you'd really have to crank it. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's funny you say that because obviously I'm a personal injury attorney. So I thought that the crack means you adjusted me. I didn't realize that the crack has nothing to do with it. So when I'm in there, I'm like super excited. Like the more crack I hear, I'm like, oh, hell yeah. He yeah. just like adjusted me a hundred times better than the last time he adjusted me. But you're saying it actually has nothing to do with it. Yeah, I mean, it happens with it usually um, because there's just so much built up tension, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's the case. And um, some people that are afraid of the crack sound, we have natural alternative ways to do it as opposed to just the, the manual adjustment. We could do like um, different adjustment instruments or other things that don't get the crack sound but move the bone. Okay, yeah. what, do you, what are those alternatives? Yeah, there's like a, a company called Activator, which has a... Um, hand tool and then there's offshoots of that and so it's like a tool that you hold in your hand and it feels like not much is going on but it actually moves the bone um we have things called sot blocks these are yeah. wedges these help for low back and you just lay on them and gravity does the adjustment as well so when you say it's like an adjustment so is it that the disc in between the vertebrae has moved in an awkward way that's causing your bones to be misaligned or like what does it mean that you need to adjust what are you adjusting in yeah it's place? mainly the it's mainly the bones so uh the discs are attached to the bones so that's where the crack sound comes from but the bones get misaligned okay, okay. and they're uh it's called a subluxation that's the it's a chiropractic term but that means like a misalignment okay and so if it gets misaligned it puts pressure on the nerve and so what you want to do is just put it back to where it goes yeah and so it sets um Kind of like a hose, right? Like the nerve would be a hose. And if you ever stepped on a hose, um, what happens? Like the water pressure changes. You know yeah, what I mean? it goes either harder or softer. Or right. So as opposed to normal neurological function, you're getting uh, an aberrant 
function. You're getting either uh, too much of a sensor or not enough to whatever the nerve is going to. You know what I mean? So when you get the adjustment, you take the foot off the hose. You take the pressure off the nerve from the bone that's compressing it. That's very interesting. So I've never heard anybody explain it like that, but it makes complete sense. So for those of you that don't understand, your spine basically protects your spinal column, right? right that's correct. So we need to kind of explain this, I think, to people because they have no idea the effect of having something misaligned, right? So when yeah. you feel pain in different parts of your body because you're back, so a lot of time it can be from back pain. Is, is that not correct? Yeah, totally. Yeah. So what happens is I believe when you're misaligned and tell me if I'm incorrect, when you're misaligned, it's putting basically that pressure on a different part of your spine. So depending on where the pressure is in your spine, and where you're misaligned, it will have a direct correlation to where you're feeling pain in your body. Is that correct? For the most part, but uh, yeah, I would say about a, a large percentage of it, but then you get things called referred pain, where it could be uh, a compression here, but the way the nerves work, you might feel it down here. You know Got what it. I mean? Yeah, that's um, what I was going to ask, because I mean, I've, I've heard, you know, usually like in my field, right, if they're having lumbar pain, yeah. it's very common. Lumbar means lower pain, for those of you that didn't get that in the beginning. Lumbar means lower back pain. So correct. if you're having lower back pain, you're going to have a much higher percentage chance of having leg pain, correct? correct? And then if you're having cervical pain, which is the upper part of your spine in your neck, you're most likely going to have pain in your arms. Is that right. not correct? Yeah. They're called dermatonal patterns. And... Um, it's pretty much like a referred pattern. Yeah. And there's really cool charts and it'll show you depending on where it is in the leg or where it is in the arm depends on where it is in the neck or the low back. So without even doing much, I could already assume where certain issues might be taking place if it follows certain patterns on your body. It's pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, because I, I, awesome, I remember seeing a chart in your office. I almost wish it was here right now to show people. Maybe yeah. I'll put it up in the graphic. But like there was a chart at Dr. Ben's office which shows like different parts of your spine are attached to different organs, like where you might be feeling pain or yeah. feeling issues. Yeah. So isn't it true that your spine health also affects whether like your liver or like kidneys are working properly? Well, absolutely. It's the, it's the nervous system. It's like a computer system or um, like an electrical grid, right? Like obviously there's nerves to your liver. Yeah. Correct? Well, where do they come from? They come from your spinal cord, yeah. don't they? Same with your heart, same with your intestines, same with your pancreas. Like, yeah. All the nerve patterns stem from the spine. So if the spine has an issue that, and something's being pinched, that could affect things all over your body. Got it. So, you know, to kind of explain to the viewers here, so basically you have your brain, the brain has, you know, your spinal cord going down from yeah. being protected by the spine. And so if there's any part along the spinal cord or along the vertebrae that's messed up, it, these spinal cords, like these nerves that are in there, they're going to different organs. They're going to different body parts. True. So depending on where you have the problem in your spine, it can tell you why you're having issues with those organs. And a lot of people don't think to even go to a doctor of chiropractic when they're having those types of issues, right? right. But it's a different type of approach. And I recommend to people that are having problems and maybe an MD is not solving your problems because he's just prescribing you medication to maybe deal with that issue, go to a chiropractor, go to an acupuncturist, go to a massage person, because it might be an issue with your spine. And if you can maybe unpinge that nerve, or as Dr. Ben says, unclog that hose, then you might be able to fix the issue that's going on with that organ, correct? 100% agree with you. I mean, the body is always trying to heal itself, right? Yeah. So like if you're sick, your body creates B and T cells to help fight infections to really heal you, you know? But the body wants to heal itself, but if there's a blockage, it can't. Yeah. So you have to just open up the flow so then your body can restore health. Yeah, so, you know, it's very interesting. I think a lot of people just don't know how the body works, right? So what it stems from is there. Luckily, obviously, I've been learning a lot of mes medicine doing these cases. And so it's, it's interesting to see how your spine really affects every part of your life, right? Sure. I, I mean, I can attest to just in testimonial for myself or Dr. Ben, you know, the other day I threw out my back. I've never done that before in my entire life. And when I threw out my back, you know, I'm gonna have Dr. Ben explain what it means to throw out your back, but essentially my spine was misaligned. My One of my feet was an inch and a half higher than the other foot. And that's, you know, that's extremely abnormal. And if it wasn't for me right. going and getting adjusted there, I literally couldn't even like bend over. But the next day I was able to get back to normal. I did some yoga and I was good to go. But if it wasn't for that, I would have been basically shit out of luck. I wouldn't have been able to function. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. You you take for granted everything you have until it's gone yeah or until like you can't use it anymore yeah and yeah when you throw out your back that could be um 
yeah, a severe misalignment, a nerve really being pinched, affecting the legs, affecting everything. And it's usually directional. So you'll find if you bend forward, that'll cause more of the compression. If you bend back, they can take it away or vice versa. Yeah. And so it's finding the right adjustment to do that. So directional means that the way you move or the uh, depending on which direction you're actually going can have an effect in the pain, like cause pain. Yeah, totally. Like say the nerve was like right here, okay? And then it was jammed like this and you lean yeah. back, that would take the pressure off the nerve, correct? And if you lean forward, it would put more pressure on the nerve. Yeah. So you would just find certain directions to take that pressure off and I could do that with certain types of testing to find the right adjustment for you. But even if you did, weren't seeing me, you could probably find certain directions that would feel better and you would stretch those directions. You, do you, do you follow what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand exactly what you're totally. saying. Totally. And in your case, what happens is if the back gets misaligned, the hips twist. And if the hips twist, one leg goes up and the other leg stays long. And a lot of people think they have a chronic um, or they just have a permanent longer leg than the other one. It's not necessarily the case. Most people don't have that. It's a very small percentage. It's usually the hips are imbalanced. And the hips are connected through muscles and things to the low back. So we just yeah. have to adjust all of them. It evens it out and then it takes pressure off your back. And then you can do yoga and have really cool podcasts. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Perfect. It's <laughs> funny. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, a lot of people just need to focus on their spine health and it's something that people, a lot of people don't do. I know in your office too, you have your lovely wife, Vanessa. Yeah. So, you know, uh, if, there's one thing I want to comment about. So a lot of people don't work in the same field as their significant other. Yeah. They literally have an office where they are able to provide all of the things that you need to have a healthy body, whether it's chiropractic, acupuncture, massage. I know that she also does gua sha, which is like fascia treatments. We're yeah. going to get into that next. I want you to explain, you know, fascia and like, because totally. I, I believe that you have a specialty within the fascia too. But I just want to say, you know, what's it like working with your significant other in the same office, you know, doing the same things every day? Do you guys get sick of each other? Do you want to kill each other at some point or do you love it? That's a great question. You know, my wife and I have totally broken all the rules. We, uh, we met as roommates. And then we dated as roommates. And everyone says, don't date your roommates. <laughs> right? They, they yeah. <laughs> and we totally did. And it totally worked out fine. And then uh, we got married, obviously. Um, the way we set it up in the office is we do different positions. So um, we call them hats, like wearing a different hat for a different job. Um, so we have different hats for different positions. So uh, for me, I have certain hats for the office where I work on the, the patients as well as certain admin. Uh, and my wife has certain positions that she does and she has her practice in her part of the, the office, my practice in my part. Yeah. And then depending on our positions, that's how we work it out. This way we don't butt heads. Like if this is her responsibilities then that's what she's gonna be doing and yeah. these are my responsibilities and we just run it like that. Um, yeah. But since it's two different professions, we don't really butt heads. We do share patients, but we share patients uh, attacking the problem from our perspective, but we don't yeah. walk on each other's feet. It totally works fine. You know, one of the benefits for working in a profession where it's, uh, you deal with a lot of people, and I'm sure you run into this as well, is you see so many different types of people, people that are successful, people that aren't successful. And what I did was I surveyed all my patients that have been married for like 50 plus years, very happy, very successful kids, mm. things like that. And I just wanted to survey what they were doing. Yeah. And what they said was they all, I mean, literally every single person that talked about their successful actions as a spouse was they did like, uh, like a date night once a week, no matter what, and something fun once a month. And so we adopted that as well. So we could take work away and we could keep growing uh, our relationship. Otherwise you end up as roommates and just coworkers as opposed yeah. to uh, a husband and wife. Yeah. No, for sure. I definitely have been speaking to, to my significant other about, you know, what we want to do. We want to learn an instrument together. Like it's important to like do things that you're passionate about together. Right. It's like, it's exciting. Totally. Otherwise you just are roommates. That's yeah. Way of looking at it. Yeah. And those were the successful ones. The ones that weren't so successful, um, they had regrets that yeah. they wish they did more with each other. I gotcha. Okay. So like I said, uh, Vanessa does acupuncture massage and she helps with, with gua sha, cupping and other types of treatment. And I know that you do chiropractic. So like in my experience, what I've learned is, you know, a lot of times chiropractic helps with like structural pain, right? right. And it'll help you heal and it'll help you get better. But a lot of times, you know, it doesn't actually help you deal with the pain itself sometimes, right? So right. it's always good. Remember, if you're going to see your chiropractor, also talk and see if they do offer massage, if they offer acu and they offer these other types of treatments, because yeah. that part of it really does help 
with pain and it's good to do them in conjunction it doesn't you don't have to do one or the other all the time it's good to let them work with each other and i know for like when i go to his office i'll either get and i'll get an adjustment and i'll get a massage or i'll get an adjustment and i'll get cupping or i'll get an adjustment and i'll get some sort of other treatment from vanessa and i know that that's really helped me heal significantly faster than whether i just do one or the other and a lot of people think they're separate but they're really part they got kind of go hand in hand would you say that 100 percent. you know my wife does uh chinese medical massage so it's it's done in a specific way to really just help with the muscles um yeah. and yeah absolutely you don't have to just do one thing it, Obviously, I want to get you realigned, so that helps you. Um, but if you're still in pain, get massage, get cupping, get acupuncture, get all of that stuff. Yeah. Like really treat yourself because at the end of the day, your health is the most important thing. Yeah. Now, pr- most likely, if anybody is listening to this podcast, they're probably somebody that's trying to be a successful person, I assume. Yeah. And if that's the case, they're probably the anchor to a team. You yeah. know what I mean? So your body is the most important thing for you to stay active and rocking and rolling. Yeah. Otherwise, if you're not taking care of your body, then you're going to be in pain. You're, you're not going to be able to focus as well. And you're going to potentially let people down. So make sure to take care of yourself. And I would say do that first and then also take care of others. Yeah. So, okay, let's talk about this. So obviously the most important thing in your life is to be extremely healthy, right? If you don't have your health, you don't really have anything. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people listening here, I've probably never even been to a chiropractor. Let's what? be honest. Like, oh you know, gosh, like you guys, guys uh, you should go so- see Dr. Ben, obviously. But the real truth of the matter is, at a minimum, you know, most people are not going to go every week. Let's be honest here. So how often at a minimum would you recommend that people need to go see a chiropractor to have at least a decent base health so that they can stay health, keep their spine as healthy as possible without being excessive about it? Yeah. I mean, it does vary uh, from person to person. I We have a couple of people that come in maybe four times a year or twice a year, like you would to, for like a dentist. Yeah. Uh, that would be like the very minimum I would recommend. Some people come in once a month. Uh, if you like to do that, you can do that as well. That yeah. would probably be the the least amount that I would go see a chiropractor. Okay. I get adjusted about once a month, just so you know. So Okay, then that's coming from you, and you know how important spine health is. Yeah, so okay. that, that's what I do. Really. Yeah, I mean, I know for myself too, obviously, because we're in the field, we know how important spine health is, but I go once a month myself, and yeah, I think totally. it's great. I mean, I don't know. I Now that I have been getting adjusted regularly, you kind of start to realize when your shit's out of whack. You're like, totally. I'm, I need an adjustment. Like, literally, there'll be, like, days where I'm, like, I've been hiking with friends, I've been doing all kinds of activities, I've been sitting on a plane for a couple hours, and you, if you listen to your body, you know what when you're in pain. So don't get me wrong, like I go once a month, but for example, when I threw out my back, I was like, I need to go immediately. Right. And so the best thing I say is listen to your body. Don't just wait for when it's hurt, do it consistently, but at the same time, when it is hurt, make sure you listen, don't wait two more weeks because you're just gonna keep hurting yourself and go in to get some help from a chiropractor near you or somebody you trust to help you with your spine health. 100%, yeah, totally, yeah. that's right. Just take care of yourself. I mean, you wanna eat healthy, right? Uh, you wanna make sure you get enough sleep, Make sure you get adjusted too. Yeah. Totally. No, it's 100% true. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's kind of like segue a little bit here. So I know okay. one thing that we do is you and I sometimes work on car accidents together, right? Totally. So a lot of people hear these terms called herniations, bulges, disc, disc extrusions, disc protrusions. So we've explained to people what a disc is. So the disc is that part in between each vertebrae that's I guess you'd call it like a fibrous material almost. Yeah. And this fibrous material has like a jelly-like material in the middle of the fibrous material. Sure. And then in the middle of that, there is the spinal column. And so this disc and the vertebrae. Not, not correct, no. Not correct, um, okay. So you're right about the disc. Uh, the way the, the, the spine works is like you have the vertebra right here and then you have the disc right here, right? Yeah. But the vertebra isn't just this square. There's like connecting pieces. So there's like, you have this, and then you have like a circle, right? Mm -hmm. And in the circle is where the spinal canal goes through, okay? But the disc would be right on top, right? So you still have this. So a disc herniation would look something like this, where the disc is right here, and here's the column, and it pushes out towards in the center of the column. Does that make sense? Yes. Cool, the difference between each one is just the, uh, how much of it is it? Like if it's a disc bulge, it's gonna be a little bit less than a full on disc herniation. So that's what that is. Um, so it's the level that it's coming out in that canal. Great, yeah. Okay, understood. Yeah. And some of them are almost interchangeable, um, but yeah, that's kind of like the deal. So what causes a herniation or a disc bulge? Yeah, well, it's typically people in their late 20s uh, through their 30s until their 
early 40s is the most common time to get a disc bulge or a herniation. It could be from multiple, multiple different factors. It could be from an accident, you know, like a car accident or a slip and fall or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, believe it or not, poor suspension actually <laughs> causes a lot of disc herniations. Poor suspension, like in yeah, your vehicle? Yeah, because think about that. You're going up and down like this, and that's hitting and making the, the bulge or the disc constantly be using it because it's a shock absorber, you know? So like horseback riding and like poor suspension in cars could actually cause disc herniations. Um, you can have certain types of inflammatory, like certain types of inflammatory conditions that would cause the whole area to inflame and then cause damage to the ligaments surrounding the disc. So even though we made it pretty simple, right? Like you have your, your vertebra and you have your little disc and you have your canal and all that stuff, they're all surrounded by ligaments. So if there's damage to those ligaments, then that would make it uh, a weak spot for a bulge to go through. So those are like the main, main reasons. Okay, got it. And these are sometimes caused by acute injuries. Acute means like short-term injuries, such as like bouncing up and down or getting hit by somebody. Correct. And, um, and so what can people do to help heal these injuries once they know that they happen? Well, I, would, I would see me. I would see, yeah. that, or somebody, I would get adjusted. Um, yeah. PT is great too. You can do physical therapy. You could do mm. stretching um, mm. and things like that. Those are fantastic. Those uh, tables where you strap your feet and you hang upside down, those are pretty good as long as you have like normal blood pressure and, and, yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, things to open it up. I mean, the idea is you want to open it up, create a negative pressure to pull the disc back in. Got it. Yeah, totally. Okay. Yoga's great. You know, things like that. Yeah. So I was going to say, um, so in regards to helping your spine heal, right, you've recommended different types of treatment. Is there anything that people can do at home on their own that you'd recommend? Like what types of food are extremely important for your health? What types of are for your spine health? What types of, you know, supplements would you recommend? Because yeah. I understand you also have this holistic approach. So obviously you can provide the treatment, but what can people do on their own to make sure that they're taking care of their spines or stuff at, that they can do? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, you could do stretching. Uh, like I said, yoga is great. Um, you could work out, obviously, and strengthen your core. That's obviously a very common thing that people do. From a nutritional standpoint, the, the main ones that are uh, inflammatory uh, are like the dangerous five, which are breads, sugar, dairy, alcohol, caffeine. Yeah, uh, and maybe even nicotine. So sometimes that's a big ask for somebody to cut out all of those. I would recommend if, if you wanted to get started on a healthier lifestyle, maybe pick one or two and then try to cut those down to minimum. Those are the ones that cause inflammation. Okay. Uh, things that you could do to help with the spine. Omega threes are great. You know, you could take those, uh, glucosamines are good. Um, things like that. You can take enzymes. Enzymes help transport things. So if there's a damage to an area, uh, taking enzymes could help as well. And these are all supplements. Yeah, they're supplements, but yeah, you, you want to eat healthy. I mean, supplement is a supplemental thing to your diet Got and it. that's what supplement means, you know, it's, it's adding on to your diet. So if you eat healthy, you know, and stay away from those, those foods I told you, uh, you probably wouldn't need as many of them, but you could still take things like that just to get ahead because you have to think when it comes to your health, it's not just being in pain or not doing good. You can be normal or you can be above normal. You know what I mean? A lot of times people come here and then they get to here, like in the, they, they get back to where they are. Um, before they came to see me. And then sometimes they want to get better. You know, I have a lot of athletes, I have collegiate athletes, I have professional athletes that come to see me. They don't come because they're in pain. They just want to be better, right? Like if a nerve's pinched at like 5%, well then they're 5% less strong, right? So they might get adjusted before they do a workout or they might get adjusted before a big game or something like that, just to give them that extra edge. So you're saying that pinching a nerve can literally affect your muscle strength. Yeah, 100%. Got it. That's very interesting. Yeah. I remember, um, we've done a couple exercises in your office where you've literally shown me like, you'll like push down my arm or you'll push my leg and then you'll adjust me. And then immediately my strength is significantly stronger immediately afterward. And it always trips me out and it's, it's pretty wild. Awesome. It's, yeah. It's pretty awesome. So that means I'm just like extremely misaligned. Is that correct? Yeah. Or you're just misaligned. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, if a nerve's pinched, it doesn't mean that it's going to cause pain. Only a small portion of that nerve has pain sensors. You know, there's yeah. other parts of that nerve that do other things, including strength. You know, so yeah, absolutely. You're misaligned enough where the muscle's not as strong as it should be. Very interesting. So it's good to adjust it and get it back, you know? Yeah, I know. I completely agree. And so, like, if you're not in pain, but you're an athlete and you want the edge over your competition, 
yeah, maybe that one or two percentage of the misalignment would be that important to you to get adjusted before a game. That's wild. It's almost as if like you should go talk to some like high schools or something and be like, hey, do you guys want that extra edge against the other team or what? And then like maybe they could like hire you to come in then and do that for them. That's cool. I mean, a lot of schools do do that. A lot of schools, uh, every every professional team and college team have chiropractors. Um, yeah, it's important. Totally. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, I know too, a lot of like um, bigger companies and stuff, they'll come and like, they'll hire somebody like you and they'll bring you to their office to like yeah. adjust everyone because, you know, a lot of people don't even realize like, so my job, I sit at a desk pretty much like 90% of the day. You know, really what being an attorney means is you're a professional email responder. So you're right. sitting at your desk all day, the same exact position over and over again. And I didn't realize for the longest time that my posture was really bad. And so for that reason, I started getting like a posture assistant so I could sit back better and I could adjust my posture. And I was having back pain for the longest time. So for the 80% of you out there that literally sit at a desk all day, every day, and that's what you do, you have no idea how important your spine health is, right? Like sitting all the way back in the chair is something that's extremely important. Putting your back up properly, having an ergonomic chair. These are all things that you should look into because one day or another, you're gonna wake up and you're gonna realize you're sitting there like this, your neck is hunched over and you're just kind of, you know, you're not shit out of luck, but you're going to need to do some serious work instead of it just being a gradual over time fix. And so if you do notice these things about you and you are feeling pain, reach out to your chiropractor, see what things you can start doing. And what would you recommend? I know for like little kids, because they're on their phone so much, you call it, what do you call it? It's called text neck. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, people are going through puberty like this and it's really affecting their spine and they're really starting to look like a turtle, you know, like this yeah. as opposed to straight up. Yeah, and why are they doing this? Cause they're on their phone literally like 18 hours of the day, right? Right. So when the bone's going through puberty and the spine's going through puberty and yeah. things are growing, it's growing in this position as opposed to up. Now there's other health, uh, consequences to that too. Remember your lungs are right here, you know, your heart's right here. And like when you start to compress everything, you're putting compression internally as well. Uh, I mean, human bodies aren't meant to be on computers. I mean, when we evolved through, through the ages, nobody was on a computer, you know, yeah. like, so bodies aren't used to being like that. And so, yeah, I would recommend doing what you're doing, getting the posture support system that you have, like the, the shirt or, or whatever it is. You yeah. Have. It's like a little device. Basically what it is, is like you, you can go on Amazon and search any single different posture one. Just find the one that's most comfortable to you. I bought one that's a little bit more expensive because I had padding. It goes basically loops around both shoulders. Correct. It pulls me back. Then there's a second part that goes around my waist. So it literally pulls my spine and perfectly aligns. And then it has Velcro that attaches and makes it even tighter. Yeah. And I'll sit that with that for you know, two, three times a week for like eight hours at a time when I'm like working. And now I find myself like, you know, I don't have to wear it as often any, anymore because I find myself when I sit down at a desk, I will find myself already fixing my posture because I'm training myself. You know, you're training yourself just like an animal. You like fix yourself and you gotta fix your posture. Otherwise you're gonna wake up one day and you're just gonna be hunched over. Yeah, and you look great. I mean, I, I've, I've definitely seen a difference in your posture since you've been doing that. So. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it's super important, you know, guys. Pay attention to what's going on. And, and, you know, one thing I've even noticed too, like I have family members, like my dad, you know, he's super hunched over because he was on a computer for many years of his life and yeah. I'm trying to help him out. And once you get to a certain age, obviously your body's not as strong as it used to be and it's going right. to take much longer to heal. So you want to be cognizant of those around you that are having trouble with posture. And, and you know, especially if like you have an older sibling or someone that's complaining about my back hurts all the time, my, my neck hurts all the time. Well, look at the way that they sit. They're probably in pain because they're literally hunched over either on their phone, on their computer, not, you know, working out, whatever it may be. And they're having back pain because their posture is probably incorrect 90% of the time. hundred percent. And Advil is not going to solve that. You know, no. drugs are not going to solve that because it's a structural issue. You just have to open that up. Yeah, so, totally. Yeah, I mean, there's just so many benefits. You know, when you're sitting with good posture, you feel better about yourself. You feel more confident. You, know, you look not, more confident too. Yeah, yeah, people people like notice the difference. I remember when I first started using the posture protector, I'd be like, people come up to me like, "Are you working out more? You look like you look like you're working out more. You look like you're feeling better." And I'm like, "Dude, no, I haven't. I like I'm just keeping everything consistent, but literally standing up properly. And there's like a difference between like even like that little angle to like this. It just literally you can feel your brain working differently. Like it's yeah. like even when you're bent over like this." Like you said, you're 5% impinging on your nerves, right? So right. you're clogging the hose now, a certain percentage is gonna affect different parts of your body. But if you just stand up properly and you keep your spine perfectly aligned, then you're gonna function better. You know, I try to like, one thing that I do is, is um, 
so when I read, so I read quite often. I'm, I'm like, I actually am like leading four book clubs right now. So like when I read, I make it a point to never read laying down in bed because when I'm laying down in bed, yeah. I'm sitting like this. My, I can see my spine is curved. And so I know I am not at optimal brain function. Yeah. So when I read, I actually try to stand or I'll maybe walk around while I read, just like something that will keep my spine aligned. And I notice not only is my attention more focused and I'm more aware of what's going on while I'm reading, but at the same time, I'm just like, I'm, I feel better energy. I'm more focused. I'm like in tune. And it's all due to my posture and it's all due to my spine health. And I want you guys, the next time you're trying to memorize or focus or read something, if you're sitting in your chair frustrated because because you're like, I got to study for my test and you're sitting like this, you're not going to memorize shit. You're screwed. Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of studies on brain function and spine, spinal health. Yeah. I mean, if the spine's misaligned, if it's if you're forcing, if you're getting negative feedback loops in your spinal canal, it's going to affect the brain. You know, yeah. like adjustments help the brain. Posture helps your whole spinal canal. So it, it makes sense that if your posture was better, you would think clearer. Yeah, know? I agree entirely. Totally. Yeah, so... Let's see. So I know that you have another device inside of your office. It's huh? called um, LipoMelt, from what I understand. So, yeah. So LipoMelt is a device that is used to help heal, but also to help literally laser away or infrared away your fat in your, under your skin, right? It's is pretty that right? wild. Yeah, it's pretty wild. I no. want to kind of like talk about this a bit. So like, totally. what do you know about like infrared light and what does it do for you? I mean, there's a lot of benefits for infrared light. The light amount's kind of crazy because it seems like it's too good to be true. Um, but when I when I was approached to get the machine, I tried it and I dropped like an inch in the first session and I kept it off. So I thought, well, that's interesting. So yeah. I did a little bit more research on it. And the way the lipo melt works is it uses the infrared light, red light, and near infrared light to open up fat cells. When the fat cells expand, there's the contents in it could come out. So it doesn't kill the fat cells like uh, like cryoskin or anything like that, but it does de kind of deflate it. And so the idea is if you could uh, expand the cells so the contents come out, then we could put you on another machine, which is a vibration machine, which gets into your lymph system and you digest your own fat. It like literally contours you. Um, and so people lose a lot of interest off of it. It tightens skin and it's a natural way to look better. I usually, if you're trying to drop pounds, you could, you could theoretically drop some pounds off of this, um, but I like to add nutrition in as well. Uh, one of the reasons why we have it in my office is because when, you, when people start a diet or they start to work out, they, they don't see the results for another month or two months before they really start to see, wow, I'm really like kicking butt, and that takes away a lot of the motivation. The lipo melt's pretty instant, and a typical program is about 12 sessions, so it's about a month, but you fit into your clothes. Like and they you, come every couple days. Yeah, and you look good. Like, it really just, like, shrinks you. Like, it yeah. shrinks your fat cells. And so the motivation's up. Well, dude, I'm already looking good. I'm going to keep yeah. working out. I'm going to keep eating well. And that helps propel people to get into that healthy lifestyle because the lipo amount really does just thin you out. And because of that, you want to you wanna keep that up. So what are the other um, health benefits of infrared light? Yeah, so it's good for skin. Um, the infrared light and near infrared light and the red light, I think also helps with hair growth. I mean, it hasn't really helped me out too much, but there are studies that show that, <laughs> that it could help <laughs> a little bit. Um, it's good for skin. It's good for tightening, uh, like, like for wrinkles and things like that. It brings down inflammation. Yeah. Uh, I know, I know the company that I got the lipo melt, they're making like a boot that helps with like neuropathies and things like that. So it can help with circulation and, and things like that. So it's an awesome, awesome thing. And that's light. You know, yeah. you're getting healed by light, yeah. which is cool. I mean, if you have a skin condition and you go outside, the UV light helps kill like funguses and things like that. Yeah. So people have known about that, but this infrared, near infrared light is really good for uh, healing and bringing down inflammation. Got it. Very interesting. And I know another product that I've even uh, used with your office before. So you have, you have a cleanse. So I know a lot of people have like heard about cleanses and you know, they do all different types of cleanses, uh -huh. but when it comes to cleanses, like, so when I went through this cleanse, it was a very, very strict cleanse. We weren't allowed to eat processed food, no sugars, yeah. no fast food, nothing really unhealthy for 21 days. And what I can say was the most interesting thing about this cleanse was that when I went through it and we stopped eating there was no meat. You're not allowed basically anything that was not natural, like basically fruits and veggies and things that are extremely healthy for you. When I started eating those 
things again, like cheese and, and all that stuff, my body immediately rejected it. And I immediately, right. you know, had to go use the restroom. And it was very, very like, almost like my body said, why are you putting this shit back into me? Okay. You just cleaned out all of this stuff that's super unhealthy for you. Your system is clean. And now you're starting to reintroduce it again. And it was a very eye opening experience because I've never done a cleanse before. And right. this one was really, really strict. And the moment I reintroduced meat or like some other food, my body was like, fuck that it's got to go like it didn't even want anything to do with it yeah. so you know based on your holistic experiences and your and you know the things that you've learned you know what do you think about the body and like why why do you think that i rejected it so so quickly like am i not supposed to be eating that kind of stuff yeah that's definitely a possibility what happens is if your body's really healthy when you add in things that aren't good for it it gets sick yeah. right but if you keep adding it in and adding it in that that like uh, protection mechanism goes away and your body kind of gives up and then long term those issues might stem into bigger problems you know like like it could cause real bad inflammatory responses uh, and your body initially was like dude no you know yeah. but if you keep doing it over and over again then your body kind of gives up and it could cause chronic things. Is that the case for you? Maybe not. Maybe so. I, I really don't know. But like, it'd be like somebody that eats McDonald's every day or Burger King or, or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, that might be fine. But if you give somebody a really, somebody really healthy, like, uh, like some fast food, they won't do well because the body already knows to reject the things that are bad. It's until you like get into almost apathy about it that your body doesn't get as sick because it kind of gave up on it, you know, it's fighting other things. Yeah. So that's probably what happened. Um, yeah. what, is, what are some of the ingredients that are in that cleanse? You know, like what, what makes your body like, what does it do exactly to clean you out? Yeah, so certain herbs, the, the main idea of it is uh, to handle the liver and then the intestines. It, it's very funny because like, if you go to different organs, uh, it's like this, like the heart, oh, that helps pump blood. Lungs, that helps with the oxygen, you know. And then when you get to liver, they just say a million things. And then they move on. And then they're like, all right, and then stomach, that helps break down food. And, you know, and they keep going. But, like, a million things isn't one thing. It's like a million things. It helps process foods. It helps uh, certain neurological processes. It helps inflammation. It helps f fight infection. It does, like, a million things. And so, uh, but one of the things it does is it helps create something called bile, which breaks down fats. So when you're on the cleanse, we don't want you on like meats and dairy and things because we don't want your liver working. We need to take a nap. And those herbs help cleanse out and, and handle like cloggages and bile or things like that. So the whole organ works a lot better. Very interesting. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us, by the way. It's yeah, definitely totally. something that was super interesting. I've never been down that road. I know a lot of guys probably like they hear cleanse and they're like, no, I'm not into that. But all I can say is like, since I've done the cleanse, I find myself eating about 70% better just yeah. like overall. Like now before like I eat something unhealthy, I'm like, oh man, my body really doesn't want that. And then I'll find myself always choosing the healthier option most of the time now. You know, don't get me wrong. There'll still be the nights that I'll binge. But now when I binge, it makes me even feel like still like kind of sick. So I'm actually kind of excited that I've like chain turn that leaf into a new chapter when it comes to being significantly healthier yeah the end product of the cleanse is to um not only lose weight or feel better but to have the healthy habits and know that you could do it you know what i mean yeah um a little bit more on the liver though i mean it does so many different things that it affects like a fatty liver could affect estrogen and then yeah. there's two different types of estrogen there's good estrogen and bad estrogen Bad estrogen causes all sorts of hormonal problems as well as stubborn fat. So people that that have that fat and they work out all the time, they try to eat well and they just can't lose it. It's usually a hormonal yeah. thing and it's usually because of a fatty liver or a liver that's not working. Crazy, right? Yeah, it's so wild. it does a lot of things. So you wanna, when you do detoxes and, and, and things like that, you wanna focus on the liver first. Got it, and then by detoxifying your liver, it has an effect on the rest of your body and makes you healthier overall. Yeah, totally. Okay, very cool, awesome. Okay, what I wanna do now is I kinda wanna like shift gears. I wanna kinda get into your head and I wanna talk to you a bit sure. about, you know, what are what do you think, um, what are some decisions that you've made in your career? I remember you were in a completely different career before this and then you ended up going to be a chiropractor. What, uh, what change made you wanna go down this path and why did you end up where you are today? Yeah, there's a couple of things. Uh, well, my, my dad's a chiropractor um, and he does the same type of things that I did. And growing up, I would see people who had chronic conditions that just got better. Um, I've seen people with diabetes reverse. I've seen, I'm not saying chiropractors do this legally, um, but I've seen that stuff. I've seen uh, people that heart disease go away, like things that I thought could just go away. 
you yeah. know, and then growing up, I thought I was the only person that, that thought that way because yeah. uh, a lot of people were on tons of medications or things that just weren't getting them better. And it always stuck in my head that, you know, the chiropractic adjustments and the nutrition really were helping people, yeah. you know. Um, in my early 20s, yeah, so I had a pretty successful landscape company and we didn't really want to, I, I didn't really want to do that for the rest of my life. And I was looking at the whole chiropractic thing. And at the same time, my dad had cancer. Um, and it was pretty bad, but with the nutrition and certain detox protocols and things like that, he actually beat it and he reversed the cancer and he, he doesn't have cancer anymore. So I was like, okay, I should probably do this. And I knew the stigma about chiropractic and I knew the stigma about the line of work I was going to get into. But at that point I just didn't care because growing up, I saw people getting better that everyone else said you couldn't get better. And then here's my dad getting better on uh, something that was for sure going to kill him. And they didn't. So I thought, well, I either can make an impact and help others, and it doesn't really matter what people think of me, or I could worry about what other people think if I'm going to be a chiropractor or not, and know that I could have made a difference and I didn't. So I decided to just go for it. Yeah. And I just did it. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I feel you. So you were in landscaping before. How did that all start about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty wild, man. I mean, you like the whole story. Yeah, I want to hear this whole story. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was 14 and my brother was 16, 16 mm. or 17. And we found out that you can make $25 uh, per lawn uh, mm. if you cut somebody's lawn. And we could do about three lawns per hour if we were good. So oh, we wow. were making about $75 an hour at so you 14, it. Yeah. 15. That was like really good. Oh, man, I wouldn't even know what to do with that money at 14. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like wild. Yeah. And then it blew up. Uh, I think I was telling you this before, but like uh, uh, two of my friends were like borderline. They were going to be like bodybuilders. They were like really in shape. Yeah. And my brother and I were landscape or besides landscapers, we were lifeguards. And yeah. so uh, we would go after lifeguard and we would start going like house to house. It was hot in the summertime. So we we're wearing like the short lifeguard shorts and no shirt. And Dude, like we just got so much business. We had women drinking wine outside, watching us. They have parties. Well, like it was complete reverse sexism. And <laughs> people offering 50, like it was crazy. The, the lady that would sell us mulch was like, hey, if you, if you buy mulch with their shirt off, we'll give you the mulch for 50% off. Like it was wild, like completely like. This is hilarious. It would, is never, it would never fly if it was the opposite way. Oh, but man. that's what happened. And we blew up. We got way bigger than we thought. And then we had to hire more and more people. And then where did you find your guys for this? Just the wrestling team, or like where would you? Where, they were did, close friends. Did you, you have know, like guys? Like you didn't put up an ad. Like sexy guys come. We need landscaping no, assistance. No, no, but they were they were they were like they were in shape, you know. They yeah, were, and they were stoked. I'm sure they were excited. Yeah, because it was, first of all, they're like 16, 17 at this time. Yeah. This is like a little bit later. Uh, and yeah, it, they got paid well, but then they were constantly getting compliments and just yeah. like women like oogling at them. And then we were just <laughs> killing it, like. <laughs> That's so funny. You like by the time the I was 22, we had 40 employees. Oh we had God. like a sales division. We had at that point we changed the model. Like we had to wear shirts and stuff. Like we knew that oh, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't like keep that going. <laughs> Why but, you should have kept that going? That was your that was your money maker, man. I know, I know. But <laughs> that's <whatever>. funny. <laughs> yeah. So. It, it was a good gig. <laughs> what did you learn from uh, running that company? Like being so young, dude. I mean, like you were 16, 17. Most 16, 17 year olds, I was playing fucking video games. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I was not thinking about running a company, being in charge of managing other people. And you had all this cash. Did you do any cool stuff with it? Or what did you do with it all? I had a giant monster truck. You had a giant monster truck? Yeah. Oh man. Why have I not seen pictures of this I'll yet? show you. It's awesome. Yeah. It, it was a blue, blue, lifted blue Dodge Ram with white racing stripes. And it was like... Awesome. That's amazing. And, you, and you were driving this around the shore, right? Because you're yeah, from Jersey. Jersey shore and all, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, he's a Jersey boy. So, I mean, he, dude, you must have had a great time back then. Dude, it was awesome. It yeah. was like, it was, it was a good time. Uh, what did I learn? Well, I learned it doesn't really matter what age you are to be successful. Yeah. And um, that, was, that was one of the important things I learned. And then the other thing was people are just people. Because, like, uh, I joined, like, a, a networking group, the one that we're in, um, the BNI one. Uh, yeah, we're in a BNI group together. I know you guys have heard me talk about it before, but it's called Business Network International. If any of you are looking to grow your businesses, find a local BNI group. It's really great. Like, we, you know, honestly, since I've joined, it's doubled my revenue, and every year it keeps growing because of it. And I know for you, it's been super helpful. But that's kind of my plug for BNI. I love them very much. Yeah, so we were in it when, I, when we had the landscape company. And what I yeah. learned was adults were just people. It didn't really matter. Like, yeah. I thought, like, if you hit a certain age, you had to act a certain way. 
away and you got the knowledge and, and you were an adult yeah. and that was it. That is not true at all. What I found is people are people. The guy that's a Slav at, in high school might be the Slav at a, as a 50 year old. You know what yeah. I mean? Like the perv, it's still the perv. You know, like people are people and learning that, then you, you would know how to communicate with them. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. would be like, okay, even though that guy's an adult and I'm 18 or 19 years old, um, I'm going to treat him like this guy who acts like him because that's, that's how it is. Yeah, you, know? you got experiences that a lot of people don't even get to their like mid-20s, right? And what did you learn from like managing? Were you, was it like you and your brother co-owned the company together? Yeah, I mean, he was, it was mainly his company. I was vice president. I was president for like a, a quick second, but really it was, it was, it was his company. Um, yeah, what did I learn about management? Uh, you have to give people goals and opportunities to grow. Otherwise, they're not going to want to do uh, like an hourly wage with no, no, nothing on the horizon. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you have to give them uh, ways that they could, if they improve their performance, they could keep succeeding in the company. Otherwise, they're going to come in and leave. But it was wild, man. I mean, when I when we were doing it, like we had all sorts of employees and. You have to deal with real life situations, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, it was tough, but it, it gives you the personal responsibility of, of being able to do something like that and then the knowledge and confidence that you can do it. And also, like, I totally fa faked it till I made it too. You know, like when we did like, uh, I remember we did like what's called a retaining wall. That's like brick wall that holds like a, um, like a garden or yeah. like, like mulch or something like that. We totally didn't know how to do it and we would just go on Google and and learn and then yeah. hope for the best. You figure it the hell out. But uh, sometimes you have to do it. A lot of times people get in their head and it's all about plan, 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 theory, 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 but without action, nothing gets done. And so it has to be like 50% action, 50% plan. Yeah, I know we were talking about this last night, but it's just wild now, like, right? If there's anything you really want to do, you can probably figure it out on YouTube. I mean, there's probably entire courses on different subjects on YouTube nowadays. I mean, I know this year I've like been just hanging out around the house and there's been so many things that I've been wanting to fix and do. And usually I'll hire a handyman and my girlfriend's just like, fucking do it. You know, yeah. pull up a YouTube video, figure it the hell out. And I figured it out. There wasn't a, one thing that I couldn't figure out on YouTube, you know, just everything from like changing our thermostat to like doing some recessed lighting, like all kinds of different things around the place. And, you know, these these are cool skills that now, like I even learned how to like resize my own watch because I usually like take it to like a watch person and it's yeah. not that hard. You just get this little tool and you do it yourself. And so it's like, it's wild. As long as you want to find the information, you can find it out there. Yeah, it's good. It's good to be handy. It's good to uh, be able to know how to do things because it makes you in charge of your life as opposed to having to depend on others. You know yeah, 100%. I mean? So let's, um, let's kind of get into the next question here. So yeah. the next question I have for you is, you know, you're a chiropractor. A lot of people don't deal with people face to face all the time, right? Yeah. So you're constantly with people, you're touching people, you're face to face, you have a lot of connection. I'm sure you've had some crazy ass clients, right? Like people yeah. that have just driven you nuts, people that you're just like, oh my God, I'm going to touch this person. They're going to sue me. I can just feel it. Like shit's about to go down. Like, what are some of the craziest clients you've had and what did you learn from them? I'll give you a good example. Um, so most insurances like, well, uh, pay the doctor, but there's a one, one or two insurances that pay the patient and then the patient has to uh, bring the checks in. So I had a woman that was coming in, her and her husband were coming in for like a year, a year and a half. And um, yeah, for some reason the office numbers were like, were like a little bit low and so I called my biller and I was asking um, to do like research on what we were billing and, and uh, like where all the money was coming from and like the next day I got a, a call from this this one patient this woman and it was a threatening call or, um, about like hey I think you're scamming me I think you're trying to steal money like you know I used to work in the chiropractic office this seems really sketchy I think you're trying to defraud the insurance Jesus. company like Dude, it yeah. was like hardcore, you know, and I'm like, oh my gosh. But I had my biller be looking at everything. So I had her look into what this lady was talking about. And it turned out not only like I underbilled her, I should have billed her more, but she was getting the checks and I didn't know this. And the biller was like, well, um, well, is she telling all you this in the office? Like you're getting the checks from her, right? I'm like, no. She's like, dude, you have to collect. She's getting the checks. Like, and so I didn't know how to approach it. And then the, I think it was the next day or two days later, the husband who uh, 
was kind of like a tough guy, but was not tough over the phone, was in a panic. Like, hey, listen, my wife, um, I think my wife's been stealing from you. You know, like, we don't want to get sued. We don't want to go to jail. Like, how do we make this right? Yeah. How much do we owe you? And I'll pay, put it in an envelope and pay you in cash. I was like, what the heck is going on? So I told them. And so we, we finally got the money. But what they taught me is when people get really critical of you yeah. um, or are critical of somebody, they're really talking about their own crimes. And so when she was talking about fraud and stealing and all that stuff that I was doing, I wasn't doing any of that. But that was on her conscience and she was actually doing that. Yeah, she was reflecting her insecurities back on you. Right. Yeah, dude, it's, it's very interesting. You know, I've always like, when people like, they're like, I don't know why that person was so mad. Why did they just lash out on me? It's like, a lot of times it's not what you did, right? right. A lot of times people are frustrated because they you violated one of their rules or something that's going on with them, right? Or, and they're trying to like externalize it by yelling at you about something that they might've done or something that's actually bothering them. So I always try to tell people when somebody freaks out on you, when somebody's stressed out, when somebody's just like acting abnormally, when it's not in correlation to what you did to them, it's probably because it's something that's going on inside of their own brain and something that's going on in their own four corners. Yeah. So don't take it too personally. Take everything with a grain of salt. And remember, as long as you're being a good person and doing the right things, don't let other people's negativity and all their cancer and all their bullshit affect you because then it's just going to bring you down it's going to ruin your day 100 percent. yeah i mean i had a i had a patient that he still comes in um but like one day like he's been with me for almost eight years it's about seven years he's been a patient of mine like years ago he came in and he was like hey i don't want you to touch me i don't want any like i don't want you to hurt me blah 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 and he's like very antagonistic like things that i've never and i asked him have i ever hurt you no but i don't want you to mess up today blah 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 and he was very pissed at me and uh, he leaves. I'm like, well, I don't think I'm ever going to see this guy again. And uh, my receptionist at the time, I was like, oh, my gosh, did he, did he tell you what happened? And I said, no. He goes, she goes, he lost his job and his wife left him like yesterday. And I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, he's going like he's going out after this, trying to blow out some stress. He came in like two weeks later as if nothing happened. Yeah. Like him yelling at me, all that stuff had nothing to do with me. It was yeah. his wife left him and, and he lost his job. Yeah. But if I took that to heart, then I would like be stuck in like significance and what was I doing? And like, it would, I'd be all in my head and I wouldn't be, be I mean, able to be productive. Yeah, no, it's true, man. You kind of have to take everything with a grain of salt and realize everybody's got their own shit going on, right? Yeah. Just because it's bothering you or you got the backlash. Oh, man, I remember the other day I was like, I was having a tough day just because of work. Like, I dealt with like a super difficult adjuster. And then like, I had to deal with my bank for some stuff. And I took it out on the customer service person. And, you know, same thing. Like, yeah. that person didn't do anything wrong. They're just trying to do their job. But I got frustrated that they made me wait longer than like five minutes. And we live in this instant society where it's like, I want everything now. I want it done this second. I want immediately and I let you know my own emotions take over because I was so frustrated from what happened before and so the customer service person got an earful from me for like making me wait like five ten minutes over something that she had no control over so it's true you know yeah. it's like it whether you're doing it or what somebody else is doing it to you you need to be cognizant of that stuff and immediately afterwards I apologized to the person because I was like I, I apologize I had no reason to yell at you this is not your fault and you need to kind of take ownership for what's going on in your life and make sure that other people also don't bother you when they're got shit going on that's true because it could spread right like if you didn't apologize to or maybe that would be make her in a bad mood and then she yeah. would be taken off on somebody else and could keep going. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, it makes some sense. All right. So I want to ask you another question. So if you could go back in time and you could talk to little teenage Dr. Horning yeah. back in uh, back in the days when he was mowing lawns and stuff like that, what is something that you'd go back and tell him? I'd tell him this. I would say don't try to seek approval from others. Be yourself. You know, because you can't really help if you're always trying to please other people, you're going to always be at the effect of other people and you will never be caused over your life. You know, like you are who you are. And unfortunately, everybody has different opinions and thoughts and feelings about this, you know, and be you, you know, and whatever you're into, keep doing it and keep thriving. But don't try to please other people all the time because then you lose uh, the effectiveness of yourself and you lose the essence of yourself. You're going to be worrying about what your friend thinks or whoever it is trying to get their approval and you're going to lose sight of who you are as a p person. That's what I would tell myself. Yeah, that's very interesting. You but know, I learned that um, early on when I was, uh, when I was um, at University of Maryland, I was a rower. Um, and for the longest time, if people were like talking smack or talking trash to me or whatever, I would always crumble. 
So like if somebody was like talking shit or something, I wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't succeed. And so, um, anyway, I came up with this realization that I don't need sympathy to survive and I could just, um, I can succeed on my own without having to get approval of others. And I think that's what I was doing. And there was this race that would get me to, um, to become a varsity rower on the team. And the guy was a little bit better than me and he talked shit. He was talking shit and I thought, hey, I don't need sympathy to survive. And I had that in my head and I thought, I'm just gonna be me regardless. And what I was doing was I think I was just getting sympathy from the guy and losing because I wanted his approval. I think that's the, the reason behind it. But instead I said, screw it. And we did this race and not only did I beat the guy, I had him throw up on himself. And it was it was crazy. And yeah. I ended up getting onto the boat and I became a varsity rower for the team. And it was because I took ownership for myself and I stopped caring about other, other people's feelings and, and thoughts. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's interesting that you did rowing. What did you learn from rowing? Like, I mean, was that a fun sport to play or was, I know it's a very much a team sport, right? You guys have to be yeah. in perfect synchronicity. Yeah, it was, it was probably my favorite sport. Um, I've done a lot of sports. It's teamwork and individual. So on the boat, each seat does a different thing, even though you're rowing, you know? So like if you're at um, what's called the bow part, uh, you're trying to keep the, the boat even, you know, if you're at the, if you're at the stern, you know, then you're gonna try to keep it even because everybody's trying to follow your pace. So you have to have a good rhythm. If you're in the middle of the boat, then you're gonna have to be strength and power. And so each person has a different position, even though they're all working at the same time. And it's awesome if the boat grows perfectly is like you're gliding it's magical you're like on the river and it's just it's fantastic i mean uh, this was in university of maryland and there was like a bald eagle that would fly by and it was like awesome you know yeah i'm sure it was absolutely beautiful and how many people are on a boat there's a couple different ones uh eight is the most common so eight plus a coxswain, which is a small little person that yells at you and Got steers it. the boat. Uh, I'll or probably if, be that person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you could. Um, they have to be tinier than you. Um, and then uh, a four. Like, like how little are you talking? Like under 100 pounds or like? Yeah, maybe like five two, five one, five Got three. It. So you five really four. want like an actual little person. Yeah. Yeah, and they're there to keep the rhythm, so they'd be like, row, row, or what's their job? They're steering. They're steering and motivating you. Um, and you're not, when you're rowing, you're looking right at the guy in front of you, so you're not seeing if you're, like, passing a boat or not passing a boat. So if you're passing a boat, you wouldn't know. So the guy would be like, hey, you're passing him, you know? So it gets the motivation up to work harder, you know? Because Got it. So he's your eyes, he's also your motivation, and he's also steering the boat. Got it. And so you want to stay focused so that you can just focus on your job instead of looking at other places. And I'm sure that you don't have the same strength also while you turn your neck, right? Which goes back to your spine strength. Right. Yeah. And what happened with me was I was in the heavyweight boat. Uh, at the time I was lightweight, but I was, I was stronger than, I was str a little bit weaker than some of these heavyweight guys, but I was like 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 pounds less than they were. But I was just a little bit weaker than them, which yeah. means that weight wasn't there and that little bit of weakness didn't make that much of a difference compared to not having like a heavier person on the boat. Got it. Cause you guys were lighter. So you would still go faster. I was. Yeah. That's very so. interesting. Was there ever a team that was just a bunch of li like little guys that were pretty strong? I don't know. I, I, I've never experienced that. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know, man. Maybe. So there's usually a wide range of like larger. larger it was mainly large guys. guys. Got it. Large guys or medium sized guys like us. Would it be people do, like football players on off season would go and row just to stay in shape? They could. Um, they probably wouldn't be, they'd probably be too heavy. You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah, it's, it's, it was the most hardcore workout I've ever done. That's very interesting. In my opinion. And I've done a lot of sports. Very so cool. uh, rowing was the most difficult. I was in the best shape and I had a team that was like your team. You know what I mean? I gotcha. Very cool. Okay. And the last question I want to ask you is, you know, you're obviously running a successful business and you've been doing so for a while now and you've got your head on straight. You know, you guys are doing things right. What are some of the habits or what's a habit that you do every single day or, you know, whether it's once a week, whatever it may be, that makes you have a successful life or something that allows you to keep your peace or, you know, keep sane? Like, what do you like to do to, to, to kind of stay on pace? Yeah, I like structure. So um, one of the things I like to do is I 
like I have a to-do list every day. I've had it since 2012, and it's all the things I like to do. And once those are done, then I'm able to endure my life. And so, like when, a priority to-do list, like the things that you have to get done today. Yeah, hundred percent. Nice. I do the same thing. Yeah. Go, sorry. Continue. Yeah, and I, I write it down because it feels better for me when I actually check it off as opposed yeah. to do something on like a phone or a computer. So I have a check sheet that I do every day, uh, and then. What I try to do is every month I have the monthly goals, uh, every year I have yearly goals, and every day I have daily goals, but they're all trying to hit the monthly goal to the yearly goal, so I achieve those things. Mm -hmm. So when those are done, then I can enjoy my life and, and the pressure's off, you know, but I try to get those and I try to make them games, and if I can make it a game, it's fun. If I make it too serious, then I get bummed if I don't do it. You know, if it's a little bit lighter, and it's not mu not like a must have, but like a let's go for it. It's way funner to do than if it's like a, I need to get, do this or whatever is going to happen. You know what I mean? So I do that. Uh, I do cayenne pepper in the morning. So cayenne pepper is like uh, it gets the circulation going and it really gets you up. Uh, what do you like a shot? What do you do? Like do you grind yeah. it up and put it in your food? Yeah, I have a I have a liquid form of cayenne pepper and I have a. Um, yeah, I do it like a dropper. And I do a dropper into like a little shot glass with water. And I take that and then it wakes me up. And then that, that, I take my vitamins. That's super interesting. Like that. I've never heard about that. We'll do it next time. Yeah. yeah, at the office. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so you just like put it, it's like super spicy or like. Yeah, it just, I mean, I, I try not to taste it. I try to just go for it. It's yeah. kind of like taking a shot, but it's healthy for you. Yeah. Yeah. And that wakes you up. It gets circulation going. It gets the mind going. And it's That's like, very interesting. Definitely um, send me some because I, you know, I take a, I take a pretty like every morning I make this shake that's about with a bunch of different fruits and vegetables. Yeah. And then I add these scoops of different supplement stuff. And I also okay. put like go to cola. I, I put a bunch of things. In you there can get morning. deep into it. So what I'm saying is like if I put maybe a shot of cayenne pepper, I'm sure it would help it out too and just kind of get me going. But totally. I want to try that out. Yeah. We have, uh, we have uh, capsule form. And then the liquid stuff. So the capsule, you're not, you're just gonna take it, and it'll, it'll just work. But I kind of like the liquid because it, it like it does punch you in the face. Yeah. You know, like I know, I don't know if it's Tony Robbins, but some of the motivation on your guys, they do like the cold showers or like yeah. the ice baths or like, uh, like the cayenne pepper just wakes you up. Like yeah. it just snaps you out of whatever funk you're in. And That's then, funny. <laughs> I gotta try that out. Going. See how that goes. Yeah, yeah, totally. Very cool, man. All right, brother. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. Totally. Um, what I want you to do now is if you could do me a favor, please tell everybody how they can get in contact with you sure. and how you, they can reach out to you if they need help. I know if you're local, it's hard, you know, it's great to come to see Dr. Ben, but if not, find a chiropractor near you that can help you out. So Dr. Ben, why don't you give everybody your information, see how they can reach you and if they have questions about their spine health. Sure. So uh, the website is www.drbenhorning.com. Um, do you want me to give them the phone number as well? Yeah, your phone cool. number, anything you're willing to give them. You make sure you give them your TikTok, your Instagram, all the above. Yeah, 949-422-7698. That's the phone number. Um, yeah, follow me on Instagram at Dr. Ben Horning DC. And follow me on TikTok at Dr. Ben Horning. And Facebook, Benjamin Horning DC. I mean, they're all there. It's my name. Uh, just follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and um, Facebook. Yeah, and Parlor. I'm on Parlor now. Dr. Ben Horning on Parlor. And then uh, I wrote a kid's book called A Kid's Guide to a Healthy Spine, and you can buy that on Amazon. Fantastic. Cool. All right, very cool. Thank you for tuning in today. We look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thank you. Nasty.